Hello there and welcome to 10 tips for more efficient workshops in Dwarf Fortress. In this one, I'm going to go over various tweaks that you can employ to make your dwarves get more productive. I'm going to go over work orders and stockpile configurations and workshop configurations, so you should be somewhat acquainted with these topics to get the most out of this little list. So with that being said, let's get started with number one, and that's Put up a layout for your workshops that makes sense. This is something you will practice and improve upon a long, long time. Probably never stop with it because there's so many ways to do it. But the gist of it is put stuff together that fits together, like a smelter and a metalsmith. This makes metal, this processes metal. Here I store my wood, or will store my wood, there's none in yet, but here's my carpenter, here's my bowyer, here's my wood furnace, all the wood consuming industries around there and uh, you can apply that that thing to pretty much everything the thing about efficiency in dwarf fortress is here's the for here's the farms here's the food processing hauling is like one of the biggest time killers out there and bringing the workshop and the storage where the which the dwarves will work with close together eliminates already like 80 percent of the wasted time just by design it's that powerful. That's why I put it on one of, number one of this list. Number two is a little bit less obvious, but also very, very powerful and easy to employ. And that's linked to the stockpiles. Put up a flow in your stockpiles. How to do so? I show you. So up here, we do chop some wood. If we had a lot of trees here, which we don't have, but let's imagine lots of trees here, I would put up something like this. One stockpile here for wood, maybe another one over here, so we have a few scattered all over the place. So people that chop wood don't have a long way to hold it to a correct stockpile because dwarves love to go the shortest way possible in the first place. And then we got these stockpiles here, and now we get back to the workshop area. Here, this stockpile, you go into this menu, and now you tell your workshop, uh, the stockpile, to take from a certain stockpile with this uh, thing and now we configure this place to pick up its wood from these external stockpiles this leads to a behavior where your woodcutters or the haulers in the vicinity will first put the stuff in here because that's the closest way and then when other haulers are free they will pick up the stuff from here and put it down there you can then go even a little bit further but that's another point on my list that i want to introduce later but these flows you can make them with all manner of different things I'll show you a couple of implementations in, uh, in this video as well, but I think you get the idea. Use the fact that your dwarves love to always haul the shortest way possible, and this way you can trick them into some sort of more efficient hauling behavior. So number three is going to be a bit of a stockpile manipulation for your farmers. So farmers, they really can get some help. If you put a stockpile zone into their vicinity where you allow them to store their seeds at this way all the seeds that will get produced in the course of the time will be here and when something new comes up your farmer just have a short way remember hauling takes time here we have it again in action it's really important to note though that you can put more in there you can also put in potash in there which is found in the bars and blocks area in the other materials. Potash is used as fertilizer. You could also put in bags or, or empty bags if you expect a lot of seeds. Stuff like that really makes the workflow easier. Number four is a stockpile configuration for your smelters area and it looks like this. Here I have configured it. This is the smelter stockpile. It stores metallic ores, it stores the local flux stone for the steel production, and it also stores coal. So we have fuel, metal, and flux in one big stockpile, and, well, eventually they will sort out the bigger boulders here as well. But in a nutshell, this way you have a stockpile right in the vicinity which feeds your metal industry quite well and saves you again more time. Keep uh, close attention to the fact that I have here employed these flow models that I had in number two as well. So the stuff goes from this stockpile to that stockpile because this stockpile accepts all the stone and then we sort the stuff into that stockpile so i do that everywhere where i can 
The next one here is number five, and here I have my food stockpile. And to make your food stockpile a bit more happy, you can also assign it barrels. Barrels are found in the furniture menu, you find them here. Be sure to specify material that you want to use and quality that you want to use. No quality setting here, no barrel in the zone. This leads to a setup where you will have empty containers in the vicinity of your kitchen to work with and that makes them operate all in all faster. Just keep in mind to make that happen you will need a nice overproduction of barrels or pots whatever you're using in your fortress. Number six is also another stockpile configuration and that's going to be one for your tanner. So your tanners need rawhide to process. If you put up a stockpile for exactly that, it can be really, really useful. It works like that. You put up a refuse stockpile, and it has only allowed in here the fresh raw hide. And really important here is that you allow all the other corpses. So this way it allows the fresh raw hide from every creature here on the list. If you now have another refuse stockpile somewhere else, like above ground to get rid of stuff, make sure to forbid the fresh raw hide from that stockpile and what will happen then if there's ever a overproduction of raw hide in your butcher's shop it'll get transported here for your tanner for further processing this way you'll have the stuff sorted away right when you need it bonus points if you put that refuse stockpile into a separate room with a door because sometimes if things go bad stuff rots miasma pours out and no dwarf likes miasma doors block me as well. So let's get on over to number seven and that's one for the craft dwarfs. I think everybody hates bins like these that go to the trader's stockpile. I mean technically it's okay we have lots of things that we want to sell but there's a pigtail rope in between and probably we don't want to sell or 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 clothing and no i want to keep those quivers so a simple way to get rid of that problem is to have a trade goods stockpile for me here it looks like that i've decided that i'm going to sell away all the amulets so i made a finished goods stockpile i allowed all the materials to make sure that amulets all the amulets will land in here and what happens now is i allocate a nice pile of amulets in here. I mean, you can absolutely decide to go into this bin and check out, yeah, I want to sell earrings too and bracelets, and then you just enable this item type in here as well. This way, you will eventually, when your haulers have sorted it out, have bins that are exclusively filled with tradable goods. No useful items from your fortress, no finished good artifact smuggling itself into the bin i've seen it all and it's quite infuriating when it happens so i found that quite useful for myself number eight is going to introduce a specific behavior which you can use to simplify things so feeding a workshop from a stockpile is what I'm going to do here and introduce here. This sounds a little bit uh, unspectacular, but it is such a powerful tool. So whenever you go for a stockpile, you can also link that stockpile in a way to a workshop like this. So let's say I want this stoneworkers workshop to exclusively use two different types of stone for its product. So it's really tedious to put that into work orders because you cannot tell your work orders to use two different types of stone. As you see here, I'm well able to tell my, my work order to, tell, to use claystone, but I cannot say use claystone and jet. That's not possible, but this is a way to do it. So we would go in here and store the jet wrong one here the jet and the claystone in that stockpile and this stockpile now i will link to the workshop and tell the workshop to only take from this stockpile so what will happen now is every item that gets produced out of this workshop is going to be either one of these two rocks this is sometimes really useful when you want to go for something like 
like I introduced here, situations like these come up more often than you think, where you have like two or three different materials that you want to use specifically for a set of items, and it's really a pain to set that up in work orders. To use a configuration like this has one drawback though. It's really important that you note that the workshop can only take from this stockpile. If you configure it like that, the workshop won't take from anywhere else anymore. So make sure you include everything the workshop needs there. Containers for kitchens, fuel for smelters and metal forges. I recommend to keep an eye out on these uh, new stockpiles and these configurations, like watch it for a minute or two if the workshop really does what you expect from it. If so, you have set up everything properly, but it's really important to note if anything here is set up wrongly, the workshop won't work anymore. So let's get on over to number nine, and that's a another system of sorting that I really found useful for stuff like jewelers or whoever is going to decorate your stuff, literally. So what I have here is a special furniture stockpile. I have made it so that it only accepts higher quality. So here, this stockpile is configured to take only beds, doors, tables and thrones, any material, but only of these qualities. It's really important that you have a setup for it on both quality tabs here. You cannot only set up one of these qualities. It have to, has to be specified everywhere. And it's also linked to this uh, stockpile here. So this is my regular furniture stockpile. And this one checks out if there's anything really well made in there and pulls it on over there. My jeweler now is linked to this Specifically, it will only take items from this furniture stockpile and from another gem stockpile on the other side. And that results in a jeweler's workshop, which will only decorate stuff that's actually worth it. You can, of course, employ this method on all manner of different things. But technically, by forcing a workshop to just take from a specific work, um, stockpile and configuring it accordingly by combining step one, tip eight and nine together, you can really make your industries much more efficient without breaking your sweat in this area here. And let's get on over to the last one, number 10, and that's have specialty workshops. What's a specialty workshop in my opinion? So sometimes you have projects where you want to be sure that they are only made by the best and by the perfect but by the most talented dwarfs so you can set that up by bringing up a duplicate workshop and first thing you do you disable the general amount of work orders to zero this way the workshop will no longer be linked to this list they are not allowed to take any general work orders next step you specify a certain worker who's going to work exclusively here insert your legendary crafts dwarf here or whatever job you need and then you have a workshop which can receive exclusive work orders so i could now tell this one to produce something out of the ordinary like uh use your imagination here whatever you want to get done by a very talented dwarf here you can make work orders that only count for this workshop specifically, or you just put up things manually whenever you feel like putting up a legendary statue or whatever is come across in your mind. These specialty workshops, they, they really don't cost you much. They literally only cost you a three on three grid, one piece of boulder or whatever you use to build your stuff, and a little bit of setup. And then you have a workshop that's going to work exactly by the under the per most perfect conditions possible without bringing up too much of micromanagement hassle. So I hope you found that list helpful. Feel free to drop me your comments down below. Let me know what you would have added into the list or if you have any questions or whatever. I love to hear from you folks. Leave a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed and of course consider subscribing. I'd be delighted to have you as well and I put up stuff daily so what are you waiting for? Also, there is a playlist link in the description box below, which leads you to the other Dwarf Fortress tutorials that I've made, and if you just want to binge watch that stuff, you're only one mouse click away from that. So, thanks a lot for watching this video, I hope you have a wonderful day, and see you soon.